Here we are at the X Concepts showroom, Dubai. Hi and welcome to the X Concepts, the world leading wireless solution provider and distributor in the Middle East and Africa. This is Majid and I'll be your host for the day. We are going to introduce the ARC products for which X Concepts is a distributor. We are going to talk specifically more about the free station. We have Robert with us who is the CIO for the X Concepts Corporation. He will be providing technical insight on the product. Hi, Robert. Hi. Thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Before moving forward, let me give the viewers a brief introduction on the Arc Wireless solution. Arc Wireless designs, manufactures, market, and sells a broad range of wireless equipment, network products, and accessories. The company currently holds 16 U.S. patents for the technology they have. The company has manufactured products for telecom companies such as AT&T, Alcatel, Telefonica, Sprint, along with many others. It has been featured at the Fortune's 500, fastest growing technology companies. Software and hardware development has been done in the United States, and all the other production has been done in China. Therefore, they are able to manufacture devices at a very low cost. In the show today, we are going to talk about Arc Wireless FreeStation. So Robert, tell us more about the FreeStation. Okay, first of all, the packaging is retail friendly. The device is enclosed in a non-collapsible box and is very light, approximately one kilogram, making it easier for handling and shipping. Robert, tell me, uh, how are you comparing the Arc Free Station with the other products available in the market? Giving you an example, a Pico Station or a Nano Station. Okay, a Pico Station is a CPE. Basically, how it works is that it connects wirelessly to any access point to gain internet feed. Then, you connect to your laptop via cable to have that internet feed. On the other hand, a nano station is an access point. You will have internet connection through cable and it will propagate signals to provide connectivity to Wi-Fi enabled devices. That makes it two different devices. Exactly, two okay. different devices. Now, our device, the free station, has an access point and a CPE at the same time. You're trying to say that it's a two-in-one? It's a two-in-one device. Okay. Well, the CPE will, will uh, have connectivity to any access point, while the access point will provide connectivity to Wi-Fi enabled devices. Okay. Uh, wireless products, radios, access points, they are all having an operating frequency. Right. What do you have to say about this? On what operating frequency are these devices functioning? The device operates on 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. On the free station 2, the CPE has a 2.4 GHz antenna with a gain of 15 dB. On the PreStation 5, the gain is 18 dB operating on 5 GHz. On both variants, the access point has an SMA connector with a 3 dB omni-directional antenna attached to it. Note that the sleek, small, and light design of the antenna is a patented design by Arc Wireless. Okay, Robert, uh, what makes the PreStation from Arc Wireless so unique in today's market? Okay, while the antenna gain is high, the size of the device itself is smaller as compared to other access points in the market with similar gain. Okay. In addition to that, the device itself has been approved by USFCC and CE. Great. Robert, a question for you. Does the free station from Arc Wireless operate on a MIMO or a CISO? And just please explain the term itself. Okay, good question. 
The SISO enabled devices utilizes a single antenna system for transmission and receiving. MIMO, however, utilizes a multiple antenna system for transmit and receive, thereby increasing the bandwidth effectively. Radio rates would reach up to 300 Mbps. The ARC3 station utilizes a 2x2 MIMO system, so it increases the throughput and is more powerful than conventional radios. Dear Robert, what sort of voltage or power requirement is required for the free station ARC? Hmm. The devices operate on 24 volts over POE, okay. with cable runs reaching up to 40 meters. Ubiquity devices, as a comparison, utilizes 15 volts over POE, so thereby in decreasing that length significantly. High voltage is required for deployments wherein the access points are not in close proximity with power source, which mm -hmm. is often the case. Okay, uh, what are the ports available on this device? Two Ethernet ports and two USB ports. Okay, why a USB port? You can connect your laptops or PCs directly to it through USB port. And by second quarter of this year, ARC is launching their USB camera that can be connected through the USB cable through the free station. So it's an easy surveillance deployment. Speaking of a camera, what is the cost of those? It's a two-digit cost. Let me guess, $99. No, 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 no. Then? It's between 49 to 59 US dollars retail. So another unique product from the Arc Wireless. Yes. Very good. Tell me, Robert, uh, explain to us more about the exterior of the design. Okay, the device ha comes with a uh, swayable mounting mechanism that mm -hmm. allows for easy alignment. In addition to that, we have a slide-through access panel which allows for clean cable routing. Okay. And finally, an LED system that shows you active connections as well as hardware status. Thank you very much for the information and the introduction to FreeStation from Arc Wireless Solutions. Thank you for your time, Robert. My pleasure. Hi, this is Navid from X Concepts Technical Team. I am here to show you the features of Arc Wireless OS platform. Here we are on the status page of the Arc Wireless Free Station. As you can see, different configurations which are currently active on the device. The device has two radios. One is the access radio, which provides connectivity to the Wi-Fi enabled devices and the other is the client interface which connects to a different device for its internet feed. We can see here on both sides the different configurations of each of the interfaces, namely IP addresses, MAC addresses associated with each interface. Scrolling down, we will see the different throughputs of each of the interfaces, namely the wireless LAN, the wireless WAN, and both Ethernet ports. Moving into the wireless LAN tab, we will see different set of configurations needed to enable Wi-Fi connectivity to the device, including the SSID. The modes also in which we want the device to operate, namely B only, G only, BG mix, or BGN mixed. On the security settings, are the different security standards that we can use. We have WAP, WPA, and WPA2. The encryptions available for us are AES and TKIP. And it's just a matter of typing a key in this bar here. One good feature about this device is the network extender. By enabling this, we can be able to extend the coverage of an SSID. By pressing the scan button, it will show you a list of available SSIDs where we can choose which SSID we would want to extend. Once we select that we just have to type the WPA or WEP key for the specific SSID in this box here. Moving on to the wireless WAN, this configuration pertains to the main antenna of the device which is normally used to capture signals from external devices for internet feed. There are different modes for the wireless WAN interface 
it can be set as an access point as a client device to an external access point or a point to point master point to point slave for point to point connectivity between two similar devices in this particular case we have to set out interface to be in client mode in here we just need to type to press the scan button which will show us a list of available SSIDs that we can connect to. In this case, we will choose this SSID. Now we need to enter the security settings associated to this particular SSID. It is just a matter of saving the settings and the interface will automatically be connected to the selected SSID. Let's move on to the network tab. On the network tab, we configure the two different interfaces, namely LAN and the WAN interface. Let's move on to the services tab. Under the services, we can set the configuration for the system date, port number for SSH connectivity, and parameters for SNMP including the ping wash dog feature. On the system tab, you can set the different set of user privileges, including device and configuration management. And finally, on the advanced tab, we can enable the hotspot feature of the device. Enabling it allows us to choose the different interface that we will associate for the hotspot feature. Then we will just enter the IP addresses of hotspot network and the radio server, radius server and the different parameters needed to enable the hotspot solution. One other feature is very interesting and that is the installer SSID. By enabling this and setting an SSID with security key, security key for that SSID, a network engineer can gain access to the device without having physical access to the device. The, this SSID is totally separate from the SSID being used. Thank you. Unrivaled price per performance by offering both a high powered 2.4 or 5 gigahertz MIMO CPE and separate embedded AP radio all in one device. At the price point below other CPEs on the market, this product offers the WISP, a simple, robust CPE connectivity solution, along with a separate free access point that can be used for wireless management, for extending coverage inside the customer premises or neighboring devices, or for hotspot coverage. Receive Wi-Fi access via CPE while offering simultaneous access inside your office with the built-in access point. Customer receives access to the carrier network via the CPE while providing wireless coverage to the customer's home at the same time. Make any installation into a hot zone. Hotspots networks coexist with the standard wireless networks running on the device. <music>